Hey Jody here. This is a 063 thickness 6061 aluminum 3G square groove weld test like you might take for the AWS D17.1 aerospace spec. Big shout out to Adam Booth, ABOM79, for working with me building this fixture for these type of videos. Go check him out. His channel is ABOM79. After a thorough cleaning, I got some tacks on each end. And when I say thorough cleaning, I mean a good filing of the edges using a good clean file, and then a hand wire brush using a new stainless steel wire brush and an acetone wipe, and that's about it. Filing of the edges is the most important part of cleaning this joint. You don't necessarily want to use any kind of abrasive on it or any Scotch-Brite pad or anything like that. Those things tend to give problems when these joints go through x-ray. I always make my tacks on the very ends just a little bit bigger than they need to be. That helps me prevent blowing the ends away. I've got an argon line hooked up to this fixture at 10 CFH. A lot of discussion on whether it's needed or not, but I think it helps for, the, for a joint like this going through x-ray. I'm going to slip on a TIG finger for a glide, not so much for heat at all because this is a big heat sink. It's not even going to get hot, but it lets me glide along that corner super smoothly. It's a prop in your pocket. Instead of having to come up with some kind of wooden cube or something to prop an elbow on, this just lets you glide along something like this. It's super handy. For a test like this, I always take several dry runs to make sure my, my torch cable isn't going to hang or I'm not, gonna, I'm not stepping, stepping on it or my chair's not on it or something like that. I always want to be comfortable. I have administered hundreds of these tests to other welders and experimented a lot with different cleaning methods and the ones that had good success going through x-ray and the ones that didn't. And just strictly filing the edge with a clean new file and a hand brush on the edges or a slow speed wire wheel, stainless steel, clean, not used on anything else, seemed to be the best method for getting a joint through x-ray. So that's what I did here. And you can see I'm going along at a fairly slow clip because aluminum needs a little time for any potential contaminant to outgas. So if, so if x-ray is your main requirement, if x-ray, getting a joint to pass x-ray is the main goal, and it's not anything other than that as far as uh, maintaining mechanical properties and things like that because travel speed affects all that stuff. But if x-ray is your main thing, going a little bit slow can really help. Every time you add rod, it chills the puddle. You might introduce a little something, a little oxide film or something in there and giving it a little bit of time to outgas improves your chances of passing x-ray. I got a little squiggly on the top of that one, but at least it got through there. And I ran a couple of these things, so let's just kind of look at a couple of them here. This is the back side, the penetration. One of them I think was with a smaller filler wire and uh, the one on the right was with a larger one, but they both got through there. They both are somewhat acceptable. See, I had a restart on one of them. These are the settings that I used, 75 to 85 amps. On AC, it's soft square wave, 120 hertz, 69% AC balance. Number eight cup with 20 CFH argon, 332 electrode, 332 filler rod. Now, I normally would choose a smaller filler rod. I'm just trying out some stuff today. Now in this video you saw me using a Furic number 8 Pro Cup. That works great for me for filming it. It lets you see the puddle better. I'd like to take a minute today and talk about these two new TIG Pro kits that I have added to my store. There's a kit for 9 and 20 style torches and also a kit for 17, 18, 26 style torches. This kit has a cup for practically every situation you would encounter. And I've used every single one of these cups that's in this kit and recommend every single one of them. It is basically all of the kits that I currently sell packed into one big kit, and then some. Let's talk about why you would want to use a gas lens to start with. This is a collet body for 17 and 26 style torches. First off, first upgrade I would recommend is a stubby gas lens kit with that because not only does it shrink the overall size, it just provides better gas coverage and gives you a longer stick out. This is a number eight collet body here with a half inch stick out. Didn't do so well. Same stick out with the number 8 gas lens, stubby gas lens, did a lot better. And then you can see when I added the Jazzy tin to it, it did even better. I really like using the number 6 stubby gas lens for general aluminum welding. It lets me use a long stick out when I need to, but also doesn't give me too much gas coverage. Kind of limits that etching zone around the weld. Because where you don't have gas, you won't get that etching zone. 
The number eight Clear Pro that you saw me use earlier in this video is a great all-around cup for steel, stainless steel, and aluminum. It lets you use a long stick out, but the main benefit that I have found is just great shielding and lets me see where I'm going. You can see me looking through the cup here on this aluminum puddle. That's very helpful sometimes when you get down in a corner. It just lights the way for me and helps me see the, the seam, the crack, the joint, whatever. Here you see this is me at uh, working with Mike Zancanato on a bike frame looking through that, through that number eight clear cup. That's very helpful sometimes to be able to do that. It's not always needed to be able to see through the cup, but man, when you need it, you need it. This kit also comes with large diameter gas lens collet bodies and wedge collets. Wedge collets don't have a split in them, they just have a wedge. They work great and they last a lot longer than the split version. It comes with a 6, 8, 10, and 12 cup, which are great for walking the cup. They have lots of other uses. They can be used on steel as well as aluminum, but they're really good for walking the cup. And if that's something that you want to learn how to do or if you're struggling with it, I've got two or three videos out there. Just search my channel for walking the cup, TIG welding, you'll find them. But whether you're walking the cup or not, these cups provide really good gas shielding. And if you're using an air-cooled torch, they add a little bit of extra heat sink to the torch just to keep it from getting so hot. Another cup kit that's added in here is the number five cup for aluminum. It's a standard collet body with no gas lens. A lot of people prefer this setup strictly for aluminum. I like to taper my electrode a little bit and then ball it a little bit for a whole lot of aluminum work that I do. It seems to get good arc starts, has a stable arc, but also that number five cup limits the amount of cleaning action outside the puddle, and it seems to really focus that energy to the puddle and makes it penetrate a little bit better. This is straight argon here, but man, if you add just a little bit of helium to that, it really makes a difference. Another cup that I really have come to like is the Jazzy 10. It's a, it's a number 10 cup, so it only requires about 22 CFH. Here you see it doing a titanium test plate. Even though it's only a number 10 cup, I've got some chill factor going on there with that A-bomb fixture and pretty much made a silver weld with that number 10. This is cold rolled steel, but I'm using Hastelloy C filler metal and look at that big argon shielded area. It's just about a perfect size cup for TIG brazing with silicon bronze or aluminum bronze. I like to use two pulses a second, actually one and a half to two pulses a second I've found works great. You need your metal clean and you also need a really good argon shield and you'll get it with the Jazzy 10. You can extend your electrode out really far with the Jazzy 10 or even farther with the ceramic 12 cup. Using three quarters of an inch electrode extension is really nothing for this cup. You can go way over an inch with no trouble for those times when you need to. And you don't always need to, but you do sometimes for getting down inside a hole or something like that. Tight cluster joints, just areas where you, you need a long stick out and you need really good shielding like on this stainless cope tube joint right here. The clear version of this number 12 cup is also included with a titanium shield on it. You can use it with or without the titanium shield. It's great for your average everyday fillet welds with a long stick out where you can see everything that's going on. You can see that whole big argon shielded area all around the weld there. A fillet weld like this will help trap argon so it's not that difficult to get good shielding. But on an edge weld like this, the, the edge wants to split the argon shield and so having a big blanket of argon gas really helps. On edge welds like this, I find it really helps to use pulse. Here I'm using 50 pulses a second, 33% background, 33% on time. Works great, 25 CFH. For certain alloys, mainly titanium, you need an even larger shield of gas than any of these other cups. This is a BBW, the new design, and Michael Furick is always improving on his products, but this one works great for titanium. This is a titanium test joint just like you would take for an aerospace job in a fixture with backup gas on the backside. No discoloration at all, and that's what you're after with titanium. This kit also comes with an assortment of back caps, the long one, the short button, and the intermediate one, along with a 1 16th, 332, and 1 8th, 2% lanthanated electrode for you to try out. This 9 and 20 style kit just uses the smaller hardware, but pretty much uses all the same cups with the same capabilities as the one for 17, 18, 26. This large gas lens here just requires a different heat shield. So you can turn your 920 style torch 
into something you might want to walk the cup with. If you're in a fab shop and you have a 20 style water cooled torch and you want to use a large gas lens like this, now you got it. So these are basically all the cups you've seen me use in my videos over the past few years, all in one kit for almost every situation. Learn more about the TIG Pro Kit at weldmonger.com. Thank you so much for watching.